Hey guys, John here with a look at Titanfall 2 on Xbox One. This fast paced shooter returns with a fresh coat of paint and it's looking great thus far. Now Dave and Tom already took a look at Titanfall 2 on the PlayStation 4, but I wanted to check in with the sequel and see how it holds up on its original platform. On top of that, later in the video I share my thoughts on the campaign, which I actually saw at Gamescom this year, so be sure to stick around and check that out. Okay, so first things first image quality, and it's here that we actually see our first difference. The resolution has been dropped from 792p from the original down to 720p, but on the upside the game seems to be making use of a reconstruction technique or at least a very aggressive temporal anti-aliasing solution similar to Quantum Break, which results in a dramatically cleaner overall image. The severe aliasing of the original game is replaced with softer but much cleaner lines, and in motion it manages to look absolutely fantastic. While we're still not 100% certain on the engine here, based on what we're seeing, it sure looks like a further enhanced version of the Source engine, especially evident in the trees. We have brighter colors, more detailed environments, and improved image quality, and it's all part of a much more cohesive package. But what about performance? That's the real question. The original game suffered from pretty serious tearing on Xbox One after all. Thankfully, I'm happy to report that, much like the PS4 version, V-Sync has now been engaged, eliminating all screen tearing in the process. Even better, it runs extremely well at this point. The overwhelming majority of my playtime occurred at a rock solid 60 frames per second. Standard infantry combat, environment navigation, and all other similar situations hum along without any issues at all. In fact, the average frame rate seems to be more consistent than what we saw in the PS4 version of the technical test. So while image quality does take a hit, you kind of wind up with a smoother experience on Xbox One. That said, there are certainly ways to trigger slowdown. In general, it can be chalked up to alpha effects appearing within close proximity to the camera frustum. Like here, where this titan blows up right in front of me, yikes. In another instance, I grappled onto a friendly titan for a nice ride across the map, always good fun. As we encountered enemies, the amount of smoke and plasma effects really ramped up here, resulting in obvious frame rate dips. This is about the worst case scenario I could find at the moment, as the amount of effects happening while riding another Titan can be rather excessive. But it sure is a lot of fun though, isn't it? Once my partner's Titan blows up though, I jump off on foot and immediately see the frame rate level out as I continue to seek my vengeance. Then it's back up on top of a flaming titan for some additional action where, once again, we see the same results as before. So how about close combat with a titan on foot? So here I actually ran up on this bridge, jumped off, and grappled onto an enemy titan. Again, we see some alpha effects up close causing dips, but the results are better than when actually riding another titan for a sustained period. The moment when I get killed though, yikes. Still, most of the match is spent on foot with other players and the game does really manage to hold up beautifully during these moments with very responsive control and great visuals on display. So that's about what we're seeing in multiplayer right now. Solid performance with improved image quality even with a slightly lower base resolution. It's all good stuff here on Xbox One so fans of the original need not worry about potential issues now that it's no longer an exclusive game. Now I also wanted to talk a little bit about the campaign which I saw this year at Gamescom. I have to admit, I was pretty impressed by what we were shown. This isn't a simple scripted Call of Duty clone, the team at Respawn has worked to create something far more rich. The first part of the demo actually included areas similar to something like a crisis game, approaching a base camp and using your abilities to quickly and silently take out enemies. It's possible to cloak and then boost right into a foe for a nice silent takedown even. We actually see many different areas beyond what's available here in this video, but the general idea is that the levels are extremely wide. The path forward is of course linear, but you have a lot of room to move along that path. This is where I feel the Crisis and Halo similarities come from, in a good way of course. There's also some really slick looking platforming that takes advantage of your suit's mobility that looks almost like something you'd see in a Mirror's Edge game, but with a few extra wrinkles of course. There's even dialogue choices that pop up from time to time with your Titan, which actually has a personality in the campaign since the story attempts to explore this relationship between the pilot and the Titan. Now based on this then, I feel that Titanfall's campaign may actually sneak up on people. It seems pretty likely that the campaigns included in Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare are going to remain heavily scripted and very cinematic, but Titanfall 2 seems to be going for a more interesting nuanced type of gameplay and I can't wait to play it. 
But that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like and subscribe since it does help. And until next time, this is John signing off.